Okay, just a really quick update video on a track mode with RetroPie. This is an updated image that I've built um, based on the previous video I've done about how to integrate a track mode with RetroPie. This um, largely does everything for you, so it's um, pre-built. You can just write this image and see how it goes. Um, that's just RetroPie screen booted in. Now you see the track mode um, intro video firing in, and then it will automatically boot into a track mode. So there's been a few changes in this build to the previous one I've done, and I'll sort of list those in a readme file, or you can just download it and uh, give it a go yourself. So mainly the differences here are by default, I'm trying to use a different display or um, layout. So in a track mode, the themes are generally called layouts. And you've got here an example of a very new one. It's a updated version of RoboSpin by Amiga Man on the Attract uh, Mode forums. And you can see it's got quite a few new features, and I'll feature a couple in a second. Um, but on this one, you can see the key elements of the artwork, which are pretty important, are the wheel art. Um, that wheel art, again, as you know, I get that from um, Hyperspin, but you can use uh, other game logos or other type of images to populate that. You've got the little snap video that going in the arcade machine there. And also, at the top of the arcade machine, you've got the marquee. By um, in this instance, I haven't got a marquee for, uh, I think it's Parodius, it's not there. So I've got a default arcade image. And down the bottom there, you can also see the ROM name. And on the far right, you can see how many ROMs in total. And then on the far left, you get an icon. I think that's the game manufacturer or the game genre, one of those two. Um, but also in the background there, you can see I've got a static image that's got scanline effect on. And what you can also do, if you've got a flyer or poster or some sort of artwork that's um, fairly large, you can set that to be the backdrop and it just gives the, the game and the screen a bit more authentic look. And I've probably got one or two here. So if I scroll through a couple, um, let's have a look. There must be one here, Guardians, Grand Effects. Ah, no, I think I've changed this anyway to set um, to be static. An extra option that's in this theme or layout is a scrollable or pan and scan background. I'll show you how that looks now. If I go select into displays, now I was looking at the main display, so I'll go in there, and if I choose down here, well, it has to be on the RoboSpin Beta New. I've it's just RoboSpin, but I've just called it Beta New to differentiate it between the standard RoboSpin one because um, both are installed on this. But make sure that one's selected. Then down here, if you go to layout options, you've got an option at the top here, set background image or pan and scan. So if I choose uh, pan and scan, you'll see the um, artwork at the back move about. So I just also down here, we've got a pan and scan. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I think by default that'll pick the flyer artwork. So anyway, if I go back now, there we go. So it's it's pan and scan will choose the flyer artwork and move in the background there. And there's options for the scanline effect, which you can see in effect there. I've chosen heavy scanline or high scanlines. You can go medium, low, or just off altogether. And it has a really good effect. And it does, I have noticed, it slow down the scrolling. So if I scroll between different um, options here I can I can feel it um, scroll slower than normal so it does have a bit of an effect but it's not really stop it it's not unusable at all it's just a bit slower than normal so you can see that it, it adds quite a lot to get that in the background I think that's a really good option it's very uh, eye-catching okay uh, so that's that's one of the main differences in that new thing that I've incorporated in this particular build um, other things, this is built on RetroPie 3.7, so it's got the standard features that come with that version of RetroPie that um, you can access. And bear in mind, although this boots into a track mode, it's fairly easy just to flip between emulation station and a track mode. And you can do that. If I scroll between the displays, um, and the displays you can set up here. Um, blah, 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 blah. There, so I've got scripts, main 2003, Mega Drive, uh, a test one I'm doing, I'll get rid of that. Uh, and in the scripts, it's this is um, created by a user on forums called Shax, and it's basically a set of um, bash scripts that update a particular boot file. So 
uh, if you want to run emulation station it will change it slightly so if I scroll between my displays and I've got there we go so really I've got a basic view chosen for that I could choose any of the themes or layouts but this one makes it clear that oh this is the script one anyway so if I choose launch emulation station it will change config file and it will reboot the Pi and it will go straight into emulation station and in emulation station you've got the option under the RetroPie menu to do the same to go back to a track mode so you can fairly easily flip between the two one main reason you might want to go to emulation station is because it's got the facility to automatically configure your joypad and once you've done that because RetroPie is underlying this whole sort of process the a track mode will pick up that controller automatically so it's really useful to be able to flip between the two okay exit no don't want to exit okay back left right so this is this is just um links that i've configured and i'm missing a lot of artwork on it so that's a bit lacking at the minute but anyway yeah so this is retropy 3.7 it's using a track mode 2 um, i built it about 15th of april 2016 so it's um the features as of that version it's also got some shaders installed so if i go to let's have a look um so look at this is a uh, no wait is that one i use this one so this is the mega drive using the same theme we saw a minute ago and you can see the backdrop there is some box art that's um got some scan lines on it's pretty small image for the box art so it's looking quite pixelated but given the scan lines are heavy and that sort of pan and scan it still kind of works I think anyway what I want to do is show let's try whip rush maybe no wings of war or guy need right um, I'll start this up and with the Mega Drive, you'll see that as with most of these emulators, I configured a scanline to kick it. So I'll start that. I don't know how clear that is, um, but you can kind of make out the, the lines on that. If I start the game, it might be a bit more obvious. There we go, that's with the scan lines. You can see it probably more clearly on the, the wording at the top, score, and the actual score in the orange at the top. You can see the lines going through that. And it does, I think, give it a better a better view. It's more um, traditional, I guess, to get a few scan lines going. But it's also really easy to turn this shader off as well. So um, don't worry about that. If you don't like scan lines, you can turn these off. There's also an option to make the um, screen have a bit of a curvature so it's a bit like a sort of barrel roll or how the CRTs bend at the sides but um, by default I've just configured it without that but the um, shader on okay so holding down to select tap start and because RetroArch is running that game that's the default quit um, hotkey if uh, if you configure it through emulation station that will automatically be created okay so that was um, the shaders that have been pre-configured there and you can see that I've also, if I go to select, I've also pre-configured a lot of the emulators. Not all of the RetroArch, um, not all of the ones that come with RetroPie, but quite a lot of the RetroArch based ones. So we've got Atari Lynx, FBA, MAME 2003. Now, MAME's probably the one that would get used most in this environment. Um, obviously emulating arcade machines and this type of front end and theme work really well with it. And this particular version, MAME 2003, uses the ROM sets 0 0.78 so that's the ROMs that you want to get and the path if you if you go into that you can see the path should be there that's where you would put your ROMs okay what else uh, in there we've got Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, uh, NES, SNES, Neo Geo the Neo Geo uses the same emulator as FBA Next but I'll put that in the readme anyway uh, Sega so Master System, Game Gear, Mega Drive, test that goes. Scripts to shut down, reboot, go into emulation station. Video was a default that I've just left to it lets you play videos, but you might want to change the paths in there. And it's easy enough to add anything you want as well. So that's that. Okay. Um, 
also the artwork directories for that. So if I go here, you've got with the Mega Drive version here, obviously you're you're not going to get a marquee per se, but you might get a graphic that would fit quite well in the marquee position. But the graphics that you use, or the snapshots, or the wheel art, that's been defaulted to go in the ROMs directory, but in a particular folder, so subfolders in the ROMs directory, which I could have shown here actually. So take that as an example. They're here, so that you've got flyer, marquee, snap and wheel, and they're all subdirectories of the standard ROMs directory, so that's where they're, which means you can easily get them um, access to them with the existing Samba shares in Windows. You can just double click in Windows and copy files across there. So that's uh, that's in there now as well. There's more layouts um, installed now than there were before. So on a given display, I could uh, choose a layout from. We've got that Robospin Beta New, or it's just called Robospin. I've added Beta New to differentiate it, but that's that's probably my favourite. Um, one called Working, I'm not sure what that is. Arcade Bliss, a Trackman, Basic Calls. Da, 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 da. Oh, uh, Game Station is pretty good, I think. Um, coin Ops, Emulation Station, sort of like a take on Emulation Station. Final Burn, MVS, Ro this, the, oh, the normal Robo Spin, and then the, extra, the new one with uh, the extra features, uh, extra logo showing and pan and scan, that sort of thing. Okay, so yeah, there's more layouts. Uh, it's easy, as I've shown, to flip between a trap mode and emulation station. You just choose it from the menus. And originally, the first image I built, when it automatically booted into a trap mode, the keyboard stopped working after like 30 seconds or after you've pressed it, I don't know, 20 times. But now I've just put a small delay on the boot and it seems fine now. So I've put 10 seconds on the delay. I could probably reduce that, but either way, it works fine now. Um, I've also tried to reduce the amount of text that appears on the screen when it boots, so you don't get the message of the day, and you don't get the um, well, the general output from uh, the console screen being displayed. So most of it's hidden, but I've still got more to hide, really. And that's the main differences really. I think it's a much better build than before and hopefully um, you'll get up and running quite easily with this. It's for, It should work fine on a Raspberry Pi 2 or 3. I don't think it'll work well with um, a 1 or if, if at all. Uh, also I've noticed that Raspberry Pi 3 running this for a while tends to get fairly hot. So I'd recommend uh, maybe getting a heatsink for it. That seems to make quite a bit of a difference. But um, if he does run a bit hot, uh, actually, I don't know if that's, yeah, it's getting captured on the screen. In the top right, there's a yellow uh, box that fades in and out, and that indicates that I think I've hit about 80 degrees, so the CPU's automatically getting lowered a little bit. If you get a, a rainbow-coloured square in the corner, that's um, because you're not putting enough power to the Pi. So maybe um, you know you you only put in one and a half amps, or or you're powering it by a TV or something. But the yellow square is is getting a bit too hot. So really, I should be putting this heat sink on the Raspberry Pi three, um, and I think that would help it out. Okay, if you've got any questions, please put them in the comments on the YouTube video. I'll put a link to where you can download the image if you want to use that, or you can just uh, build it yourself like the original video showed you. Anyway, thanks for watching. Cheers.